Now let's derive an algebraic expression for the width of the margin. Suppose there are two line, two line equations. Uh, we are writing them out in generic form just to understand how to calculate the distance between the two lines. Suppose we have generic line equation number one given by ax plus by plus c1 is equal to zero. This is just a generic line equation, right? And then we have another line equation um, ax plus by plus c2 is equal to zero. And when we have such two such lines, then the distance between them is given by c2 minus c1 divided by a square plus b square. So this is just following line, general lines and how, how to calculate the distance between lines. Now, in our own specific case, right, so we have two line equations. Um, we have w times x and when we expand that we we get something like this w1 weight 1 corresponding to feature x1 right and w2 weight 2 corresponding to feature x2 so we have w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus b minus 1 is equal to 0 so this is our first line and the second line is w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus b plus 1 is equal to 0. So these are the two lines that we derived based on our previous our previous definition where we had w transpose x plus b greater than or equal to 1 w transpose x plus b less than or equal to minus 1. So we had these two, right? So now the line equation, this line equation is given by w transpose x plus b equal to 0. Now you may ask me why, where the, the, these numbers come from right so where if the equation is zero then we should just though for the classification purpose we are just going to say w transpose x plus b greater than or equal to zero w transpose x plus b less than or equal to zero for the classification because everything here is the positive class all points here are the negative class and what you're forgetting here is the margin and now this one has been included here to have a margin of a unit sized margin in both directions so that is why we have these equations here because you have a unit sized margin on both sides and now we will derive it with having unit sized margins and another question here you may have is that how do we know that the margin is unit size one or unit size we don't know that right the margin can be anything um, constant such as c on either side is the same so we know it's plus c and minus c um, if we have uh, c as the margin but why are we deriving everything using one we are going through a simpler version of the derivation and we will see that if we use one or a constant c it doesn't matter because it ends up actually being a constant so the derivation pretty much would come out to be the same um, though it would be harder to derive it in the first place so the harder version is also present in my courses you can look at it uh, but for the sake of our discussion here, we will assume a unit margin uh, because it's anyway a constant, right? And then we will follow the derivation accordingly. Okay, so now we have uh, these two line equations. That's how we get from these two line equations here. From this is where these two line equations follow, right? So now we have line equations corresponding to the margin. So 
where are these lines in this in this graph here so if you want to mark them uh, i'm gonna try another color just to um be clear hope this helps okay so this at the edge of the margin there is a line this line this is one line the other line is here and we are going taking a line and going a constant size here it's unit sized just for simplicity purposes and we are going a constant step away from the line on both sides so we know that these two lines are parallel we know that they are going to be parallel and then we also know that they are the same distance away the margin side distance away from our line that we are evaluating which is the classifier this this line here now when we calculate the distance based on the formula above we have something like this right b minus one minus of uh, b plus one which if the minus goes inside it's b minus one so b minus one minus b minus one a modulus because it's distance divided by w1 square plus w2 square coefficient of x1 and x2 and now when we simplify this we can write this as 2 by um, and this whole quantity here we mentioned that as mod w Our aim here is to learn a large margin classifier and we have derived the distance between the lines to be equal to this quantity here 2 divided by w mod w so which is nothing but w1 square plus w2 square if there are only two dimensions and then we have the equations, the line equations, W transpose X plus B greater than or equal to 1, W transpose X plus B less than or equal to minus 1 for both these classes. So this is a classic example of an optimization problem where we have a constraint and we are maximizing a quantity subject to constraints so many many machine learning problems can be mapped to constrained optimization problems so this is a constrained optimization problem so now let's identify what are we trying to optimize and then what are the constraints there are two components right constrained optimization so there are constraints and there is a quantity that you are trying to optimize so it's pretty simple this quantity right here is what we want to maximize which means we are optimizing for this value so this is the optimization part and subject to the line equation and the margin equations that come with it right and those are our constraints and that's given by these two equations here so these two have to satisfy and while these are satisfying we want to maximize the distance so these are our constraints so that's why we say here common theme in machine learning learning is optimization Oftentimes, when you are learning something, you are trying to optimize for something. You're trying to find the optimal solution. Remember, we are not interested in a solution here. We are interested in the optimal solution. So, optimal solution naturally follows from optimization. And optimization is a large field of study. And we are going to just touch like the surface of it with support vector machines. Um, but it's a very interesting piece of uh, um uh, computer science um, um, subjects okay so we have identified optimization problem and we have identified constraints now 
let's see how to solve them so we have an optimization 2 by w and then we also have constraints so now to make our job a little easier we are going to convert that the maximization into a minimization because minimization is minimizing the damage is better than maximizing something we don't know what is the maximum value something can get but we can always say that this is the minimum value it can take so it's just generally easier to solve so that's why we've converted that we want to convert the maximization to a minimization so maximizing to i'm just going to write it here so we remember we are we were trying to maximize 2 by w right and we know that this modulus of w is nothing but right so we we are going to switch flip that so maximizing this is nothing but um similar it's it's the same as minimizing uh, 1 over this whole quantity. So 1 over 2 by W. 1 over. That's nothing but. By 2. Right. So now we know that there is a square root here. And um, the square root or the square. Minimizing the square is the same right so we get rid of the square root to get a, a square here just so that it's easier for us to work with and we retain the half in the front just from looking at this it just something should strike you why this would be the case because when we differentiate we'll get a two which would cancel and uh, we will be left with um, no messy fractions and that is another reason why we have this so we are going to just formulating the problem such that it's easier for us to tackle so we I'm just going to repeat this again so we understand so we had a function that we want to maximize we want to maximize the distance so the distance is given by 2 by um, square root of w1 square plus w2 square right and then what we said is that maximizing this is same as minimizing the inverse of it. So then we take the inverse, we get um, mod w by 2. And now we are saying that mod w by 2, there's a square root there. And we want to make it a little simpler. So we are going to have square root. And essentially, we are preserving the meaning of it. But we are changing the actual value that we are trying to to optimize without really compromising on its its meaning so we are the meaning that this captures w1 square plus w2 square that is retained and um, it makes our calculations much easier so now after this small changes we have half mod w square which is what we want to optimize and our constraints are the same we have these constraints that we already had okay now we simplified the first part the minimization part now we are off to simplifying the second part now i'm going to go back and get the exact line equations look at them so w transpose xi plus b greater than or equal to one w transpose xi plus b less than or equal to minus 1. So these are the line equations corresponding to the edge of the margin. So that those line equations help us get the margin. So we need to, we need to uh, have these as constraints. So these line equations corresponding to this. And we can, you can actually see there is a pattern here, right? So there is plus 1. There is plus 1 and there is minus 1 and here it's minus 1. So we can actually simplify it 
without really changing its meaning, which is what we're going to do next. So here we have nothing but we are multiplying it with wy. So let's actually take wy equal to plus 1 and minus 1 and evaluate this and how this would actually look like. And then we'll see that we'll get back the constraints that we had in the page before. So we have wyi equal to plus 1. Then it's easy. We have w transpose xi plus b greater than or equal to 1. So that is then wyi equal to plus 1. Okay, so now yi equal to minus 1. So when it's minus 1, we have minus of w transpose xi plus b greater than or equal to 1. Now we can take this minus to the other side, which where we will get w transpose xi plus b less than or equal to minus 1. So let's go back and check if this is exactly what we got. Yep, so we have w transpose x plus b greater than or equal to 1, w transpose xi plus b less than or equal to minus 1. So that's what we have here. Okay, so now we have simplified it, and now we have a constrained optimization problem on our hands. So this problem right here, this is a constrained optimization problem. And there are, there are software that you can readily use to solve these kind of problems. And if you run into a constraint optimization problem in your work right later when you use machine learning or when uh, you formulate um, a problem uh, by using large margin um, uh, classif by maximizing the margin, then you will have a constraint optimization problem on your hands. Um, and it may look different, but this is one instance of that. And there are software that can readily get all these quantities and then some data and all these things that uh, it needs from you and use and, and solve it for you and give you the model in return. What we are going to do is we are going to work through how to solve it by hand just to the point where we can understand some intricacies of modeling with support vector machines and why they are such a great model and then we'll also introduce the kernel trick now the kernel trick is a very uh, famous machine learning uh, question interview question uh, where they will come and ask you what is the kernel trick so kernel trick is actually pretty intense and we'll cover that um, over the next few lectures. Uh, and it's not that easy to readily understand and appreciate SVMs. But once you understand the kernel trick, you will have this ah moment and you will go, oh my God, they are really great. They are, I am in love with SVMs. And that's how I felt at least. So we'll do that in the next few lectures.